So, what you just watched was me putting the seasons on this 2.73 pound Angus beef chuck roast. Or chuck pot roast. Or I believe that's what it was. It's roast. <laughs> and it's meat. And I'm going to eat it. So, this is all my seasons. And basically, it's just meat tenderizer. I had some paprika, uh, red pepper flakes, salt, or a little bit of garlic salt, black pepper, um... Let's see, some basil, oregano. Uh, yeah, I'll put all the ingredients I put in here in the description below. But yeah, this is basically all it is. And I went ahead and added my bay leaves to it. And uh, I'm going to let this sit in the oven for, not oven, but the refrigerator for probably a couple hours and let everything kind of hang out for a little while. And in the meantime, I'm going to do some other stuff. So it's Tuesday afternoon. I'll give you a little update on what I've been doing with Jeep been add, adding in this corner piece here with my little spot welds and going back and grinding them down uh, I just did this piece here I've got this little section to do right here and I'm gonna try to fill in the best I can this right here I'm not gonna be able to fill that um, neither here I think I'm what I'm gonna do is just uh, take some seam sealer on the back side and uh, kind of fill it in a little bit and then I'll use my uh, fiber strand or whatever to fill this I don't even know if I have any fiber strand left I think I've just got a light bondo but regardless of what I have I'm gonna finish this up I've got to do a little bit of filling down here um, I pushed this in out or my buddy Chuck helped me push this out uh, I'm gonna skim coat this um, go back on the other side and if I got enough filler I'm gonna do a few more skim coats and let it dry I'm going to take the tailgate off and put it over here and go ahead and, and wet sand it because I'm going to go ahead and paint the tailgate and I might go ahead and prime this, this part right here, and paint it and start on the hood. I'm, my days, I'm running out of time for us to do any kind of painting, so I might try to throw in a little bit today that way I can... I can Kind of get down the road a little bit this right here feels about right it's not going to be perfect i need to go back over it with a 600 grit or go back over the 200 then hit it with a 600 and then i'm gonna wipe this down and get that ready so yeah here in the next day or so i'm gonna have some color on this thing the lower rockers i'm not even gonna mess with them i'm just gonna leave them the way they are with the holes in it and just get it painted because I can come back and do this later. I can I can uh, mask everything off and uh, I can weld and do whatever I need to do after the paint's done. I just need to start getting stuff done here. I need to come back and skim coat this, this little rust pit area above the gas filler cap. So yeah, I'm gonna start rushing because like I said, I'm running out of time to do like the body work and stuff. So I'm getting there. It's just uh, kind of a scramble right now. So let me get back to this. So here we go. It's been four and a half hours while this has been in the refrigerator, just kind of getting its groove on. And uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm letting it sit for about 30 minutes. Uh, let it bring it up, bring the temperature up a little bit. I've got my big roaster going i'm trying to get it preheated and now what i'm going to do is uh cut up i'm, I'm gonna wash them and i'm going to do a, like a rough cut i'm not even peeling them i'm going to add two onions this whole pack of carrots and one granny smith apple and don't ask me why but i'm just going to do it <laughs> i just think it would maybe add a something good to it so can't ever go wrong with an apple so let me get to that
Here I thought my roaster oven was over here doing its thing, preheating. Well, apparently I've got a bad plug over there and it wasn't even on. So I had to move it over here on top of the microwave and I've got it on 250, just kind of letting it get warmed up, getting the vegetables in here going just a little bit. And I'm gonna add a few of the seasonings that I put on the roast in here and then I'll go ahead and set that roast in the pot and put the lid on it. But before I do that, I gotta sear my meat. And when you, what you see here before you is the best stove in the world, okay? Now, my, my fancy stove went on the fritz. The control panel went out. It's going to be like $300, $400 to fix it. Nah, screw that. I just sold it for parts. Broke the old faithful back out. And my heat's getting a little too hot. And uh, I'm just going to use this for a while. So, here's my meat. I'm going to sear it really good. Make it all happy. Let's crank that heat back up. Just a skosh. Now I'm just gonna sear both sides, get it nice and brown, even the edges. And once I do that, I'm gonna throw it over in my roaster. And here we go. I've got it seared. Fairly decent, but it'll do. So, wish my little garlic sir would stay in the hole. Stay down in there. This thing here kind of feels like a big steak, like a t-bone steak is it's already tender it's just uh it just reminds me of a good t-bone <laughs> without the t-bone but anyway i got this on about 275 i guess this is probably gonna go for about five hours so i'm expecting midnight ish but that's okay i don't mind eating at any time so it is now quarter to 11 oh i got my kitchen side and I got my garage side. <laughs> so here's my roaster. I know I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to open the lid until it's done, but I can't wait. I have to peek. So there we go. There we go. It's looking good. Looking nice and happy. Can't wait. Well, what I got going on here is I'm making the topping for my sweet potato casserole that I'm making. Now, I have to go off a recipe that I wrote down, well, a while back. I think the last time I actually made this was for my mom on Thanksgiving, uh, a couple weeks before she passed away. So, I haven't made this for a minute. So, all it is is uh, one cup of brown sugar. Uh, I think it's like a third a cup of flour, a third a cup of chopped pecans, and a third a cup of melted butter. And here's my butter. Put that in there. And I'm going to stir it up and then set it to the side because right now I'm trying to get my sweet potatoes boiled to where they're soft. Then I can take the skin off of those and start combining everything. So this is what the topping looks like. And in all honesty, this stuff here is pretty dangerous on its own. <laughs> all it is is brown sugar and butter. It's good. Okay, back to it. Okay, so here I am. The three... Normal size sweet potatoes. I boiled them till they were soft, peeled the skins, put them in my baking dish, and mashed them up with my little hand masher over here. And then all I did was add, uh, let's see, one cup of sugar, one stick of melted butter, two well beaten eggs, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And I just piled that in my dish, and I'm just using my mixer here to beat it to a nice smooth consistency and then i'm just going to take my topping throw on top of it and put it in my little toaster oven for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees that's about it so here we go i've got my topping on it now i'm just waiting for my little oven to uh, preheat so look what i got i had to take a little sample see how tender it was and it is fork tender and just it just falls apart as soon as I stick a fork in it. Well the pot roast is done. 
Mmm. Good. And the sweet potato casserole is finished. I was kind of skeptical on how that um, toaster oven or a little convection oven would work, but it seems like it got a little too done on the back side. I think I'm going to go for the corner. That's going to be hot because it just came out. That might be a little bit too much for me to... Oops, making a mess. There we go. Sweet potato casserole. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's wonderful. Of course, I'm eating with my opposite hand. <laughs> so I'm kind of I'm having a hard time here. Mmm. Perfect. That's wonderful. So yeah, let's hide you back down in there. I'll come back and get you later once you cool off a little bit. And you got the crusties. The crusties are the best. Mmm. Mmm. Wonderful. Well, boys and girls, it might not be the prettiest plate, but it's my plate. It's all that matters. <laughs> so it is two o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, twenty after two. I'm gonna get my belly full real quick and kind of chill out till probably about quarter to three and I'm going to get into bed so well it is now Wednesday I think and the weather forecast isn't looking good we've got some days uh, where the low at night gets to like 40 so I'm gonna hurry up and try to rush and paint as many panels as I can well I've got some more visitors Here's my little spy. This little deer has always been kind of curious. What are you doing? Oh, he's right there. He <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Huh? He, on a regular occasion, gets closer than any of them. They smell that apple and they're like, ugh, what? They act like if it's a poopy diaper. What are you doing, buddy? Huh? What are you doing, buddy? Come here. Can I pet you? Hmm? You should totally let me pet you. I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down. Hmm? I'm probably sitting in dog poop. I want y'all to see something. I got my 
my Rebel Sun jamming. We got the air compressor going. And I got three crazy deer that just been coming around wrestling, budding heads, and trying to make babies in my front yard. <laughs> got that one looking at me. He's like, man, why are you making so much racket? We trying to get to get a groove on. Well, I got shit to do. You know, I, I really do. Y'all gonna get a room someplace. Do something. So here is a bunch of deer. <laughs> they were just kind of hanging out. And I start talking and they start running away. I didn't even know they were around me. So anyways, give you guys an update on the Jeep. I decided not to screw with patching the hole in the bumper. It's a heavy duty steel bumper and I'm just not going to mess with it. So what I've been doing today is taking some of this Dynapro. It's a rubberized undercoating and sound dinner. Uh, for the meantime, until I can spend the $30 a can for some real uh, Raptor liner, I'm just using this and painting the top of the bed rails. For what reason, maybe to stop scratches. Maybe. It, it, it won't really do a whole lot. But, you know, it kind of camouflages the dents on the bed rail a little bit. And also painted the bumper. Cleaned it up quite a bit. So... And it's dusty because I haven't had a chance to wash it because I've been doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, in the front bumper, I painted it with the same stuff just to clean it up a little bit. I need to go back and touch that up. You know, just like I said, just to freshen it up and make it respectable, I guess you could say. Now here's the other side. You can see this bed side's not beautiful at all. But... I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a bubble. I don't know. You can see I got some light spots here. I'll probably have to go back and touch all that up, but it is what it is. You know, it's a whole lot better than what it was. And Jamie is going just absolutely crazy. Get over here, nut. Hey. Oh, she ain't listening. So look, got new shoes on the Infinity. I got a lot accomplished today. Uh, well, other than learning how to use a trunk button. And in here are some new parts for the Jeep. I got some more interior pieces. I know a dash piece. This is a tan center console and two headrests. So I'm gonna put those in here shortly. And uh, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to jack this thing up, get the wheels off of it, go ahead and start working on some drivability issues, check the brakes, calipers, excuse me, I got the hiccups, brake lines, stuff like that. I've got another guy in Indiana uh, that's got a 87 Comanche that he's parting out that might have a good dash. So I might make a road trip up there to go get it. Now, it's not tan, it's black. I'll just have to vinyl that tan. Hey, settle down. I swear, she notices every little cat and just goes crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's coming along. I haven't, I'm waiting for the bumper to dry so I can crawl up in there and paint that edge black. And eventually, if I've got enough of this Dynamat stuff or Dynapro, I might tomorrow, if I have time, clean out the bed and paint the whole inside of the bed with that stuff you know at least it'll give it a no slick or no slick a um a texture to it i guess you could, maybe no slick is a good word or a made-up word <laughs> what i didn't notice is these little this little line right here apparently i didn't sand off all of the original factory pinstriping and that's what's causing it so if i can find some cheap pinstriping maybe i'll run a line down both sides of the jeep i'm gonna get some more of the spray undercoating and paint in here inside here nice and black i gotta try to find some inner fenders for the front but i'm also gonna do the black undercoating in here and that's about it i'm gonna find some some better comanche badges and stick on the side get me a new jeep badge uh 
and maybe give this thing a wash. Hopefully here in the next week or so, my new front end pieces will come in like the, the black headlight bezel sections. Uh, I don't know, if, I don't even think I can save the ones that I have because they're so busted. But I might be able to. That would be kind of cool now. Yeah, that was destroyed. Okay, got one deer here. That makes two dirt. Got three dirt. Four deer. Five, six, seven deer. Yes, I see you. Big head. And then I think there's actually two more. Well, there's another one. So it makes eight. Eight deer. I'm surrounded. 